Yeah. So uh, today we've got something interesting. Uh, people who grew up in Webster have a long history here, and you're going to recognize the name. Donald Kittleberger is right here on the left, and he'll he'll tell his story. And what's your first name? Hilda. You know what I keep thinking? It's Midge. No. Why do I say that? <laughs> and I know it's not Midge. Hilda, all right. So is here also, and to share their story about Kittleburgers and living in Webster. Yeah. You can start, guys. Well, Donald can start with the uh, first papers. Okay. Uh -huh. I'm one of the original Websterites that have was born in Webster itself, and then papers going around at the doctor's bill <laughs> for my birth at Webster Hospital. After that, after that, I grew up just ordinary, I guess. I went to went to Webster High School, and at, when I was old enough, 1940 was my first kindergarten. Uh, after that, was home, just hung around. When I was old enough to work and walk around, I used to hang around. We're back to oil company, the Webster Basket Company, which was started by my grandfather and Gallup Kitterberger. So most of the time after high school, I go up. I even worked up there when I wasn't supposed to be working <laughs> because it was family. Also, during the summer when I was growing up for summer jobs like that, I used to pick cherries. I picked cherries for Shoots, Paul Shoot, oh, yeah. and well, their family. Paul Shoot's wife was Martha Kettleburger, one of the families. So that's how I get tied in with them. I used to pick cherries for him. That was during the war times. Everybody was in war. They always had kids, and uh, one of my aunts, who was a school teacher, she picked juries for him. Uh, used to pick up potatoes for farmers around. That's how I made extra little money. And I also hung around Russell B. Mason Company. I had an uncle that used to work there, he used to there. My mother used to house clean for Russell, clean the office, so I hung around there. I also run around, hung around a and mine son a little bit, lumber the yard. They were my next door neighbors. So get around. I've been yeah. <laughs> and there I'm getting back and forth to school. I used to either walk or ride my bicycle. That was before they had the buses and stuff could come there. Where did you live when you were younger going to school? Where did in, I in live? The village or? I live at eight hundred Webster Road. I've only been there for eighty three. All right. Three years. <laughs> that's, the only, that's the only house I've ever been in. Oh, wow. If you ever know it's the electric clock on that maple tree, mm -hmm. oh, yeah. well, that's where I live. Mm -hmm. yeah, during the summers and like that, um, on holidays, families, the Kitterburgers, on 4th of July, the Kitterburgers always met over at the chutes. That was 4th of July. We always went there in the, like in the 40s and like that. It was always, 4th of July was always there. Uh, Thanksgiving and Christmas time, the Kinderberger family, we always went down at the homestead at 774 Webster Road. That's where my cousin lived. That's where my dad was born and all my aunts were born there. And that was... And also, we had uh, the Brookers. I belonged, I'm tied in with the Brookers. Uh, we always met over at the Brookers in on Phillips Road, or the one over in Shoecraft Road. Uh, they always had their annual reunion. And I, I finally ended up getting out of high school late. 
for some reason, they liked me longer than they did the other people. <laughs> Good so they kept me a time, right? So they kept me a couple more years. <laughs> well, after I finished high school in 1955, Uncle Sam was looking for me real bad because they still had the draft. So I decided that I didn't uh, want to go to the Army, so I went to the Air Force. I stayed there for 20 years. Two months, 29 days, and got out in 1975, and became a working retired bum. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> I remember all the stores around here, uh, candy kitchens, Hank's Herbs, but as far as playing sports or anything, like that, nah, I was just an average, stay home and. Work and keep busy. Good. Donnie, you should tell people about your interest in your Model A's and stuff. Oh, yeah. My first automobile happens to be out here in the parking lot. <laughs> <laughs> that, that car belonged to an aunt, and, well, it belonged to Elma Kittleburger, which was my dad's brother. My, yeah, my aunt, sister, excuse me. Well, she bought the car in 29, and turned, it ended up going to my uncle, my dad's twin brother, Carl Kitterberger. And in 1938, dad was driving a two-door car. The family got one person bigger, so he needed a bigger car, because he was only driving a coupe. So he asked, my uncle was, had quit driving the automobile, that what are you going to do with it? He said, well, you give me the old coupe. He said, I'll give you the shit, uh, Ford. And he drove it up to 1952 when he had some problems with it. And he put it in the garage, and I drove it for two years through high school, put it in the garage, and then when I came home, I restored it. Here's a little article you can look at on the. So how old is it? How old? The car is 1929, so um, it's 29 years. With, with, so uh, what was your father and mother's name? My, my, my dad was Norman Kitterberger. And my mother was Sadie See. Legacy before she got married. Oh, okay. Okay. Her sister was, one of her sisters was Gala Kittleburger's housekeeper. Okay. Carrie Legacy. They lived right over here on yeah. Michael Park. One of her other sisters was married uh, Arthur Schrader, which was Will Kittleburger's farmer. <laughs> lived on down the end. So, I, mean, I know you probably are related to everybody, yeah. right? <laughs> you know, he's been in Webster long enough, of course, he is. <laughs> and, and like in '55, I left and I just come back and forth until I got out of service. And when I got out, my mother was getting up in age, and so I stayed there and somewhat took care of her. Ended up with the house, and that's where I still am. And she, um, was she the one that died at 100 and some? 102. 102. <laughs> yeah, she had a sister who was at 103. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> but I remember we had her over here. Yeah. Yeah, the, 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 yeah you had her there. There yeah. was an article written about her. Yeah. <laughs> on, uh, on her 100th birthday. Yeah. And she was in the... Uh, Played when they had it there, and, and they made signs for it. Yeah, yeah. I was uh, when I was still working at the town, Thanks. and they had the mulch out every year. You know, those of you that know me know I like cars and so on. And I had to look out in the parking lot, and here's this Model A pickup truck being loaded up with with mulch. And I realized as driving away it was Don. <laughs> and I said to him a while back, I mean, to me, this thing is a total classic. 
And uh, I said to him, you picking up mulch in that beautiful truck? He says, that's what it's made for. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, here's a, here's a car that's out here that, uh, this is the one that, that I go. Now, what was the, oh what goodness. was the magazine? That's cool. That you wow. might need to read the articles the about with the Model A's. Something about when you redid, you you made some national magazine or something, didn't you? About uh, no. the work that you did with your Model A's. No, not really. It was in the, when I belonged to the Model A club. Oh, okay. They had a picture in it there, but that was. And we know what it looked like, right? Yeah, but I, I mean, I know it. It got national recognition somewhere along the line. Yeah. yeah. And I'll give it to you. Just a minute, Peter. What's well, all right. No, I'm not. And then show. Yeah. Absolutely. Corey Torster. Cool. I don't know it where the cool. car was bought, but I got I had some paperwork from Alma Kittleberger for her first car. Her first car was a Model T, oh, yeah. and she bought it. The, the company, really? she at that time was working for the company we back off for Webster Basket Company. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And the way it looks, the company bought the car, the first, her first car, which was the Model T, and I have a slip where she paid the company because it was her dad that bought it from her. Uh -oh. See, Charles Kitterberger, uh -huh. through the company, bought it, the car, and she would pay them back. So I would say her, this second car, was, she was still working for it, was probably the company bought it, uh -huh. and she in turn we it, but we could never find the paperwork for that. Yeah. But we found the one for first. Uh, now there used to be a Ford dealership down on North Avenue, where the yeah, Webster Herald is to, now. Yeah, there used to be. Yeah. Would that be where it came? I from? doubt it. I don't. I have yeah. no idea where they got. All I have is this slip here, where she is paying back to the company for the bond that the car was. I know Gary Morgan was saying last year that, that his dad worked at that Ford dealership yeah. and they were talking about it uh, but it's when, the first, when the first V8s came out, so that had to be 1932. Yeah. I don't really remember it down You yeah. saw this, right? Yes, it It was Sears and Robux oh, when I was growing up. <laughs> <laughs> That's about how uh, I got to let her. It's her <laughs> well, after you, I'm kind of boring because I didn't have anybody in Webster. <laughs> I always felt as I was going through school, I'm the only one that doesn't isn't connected with all these families, okay. the Kittlebergers and the Schuetz and the Shrivers, and there were so many pellets. There were so many families, and they were all related somehow or another to each other. But my dad didn't come to this country until 1928, which is 90 years ago. And he came right yes. to and Mr. and Mrs. Kittleberger made his papers so he could come from Germany. He was oh. he was their gardener or took care of, mm -hmm. helped oh, her with nice. the greenhouses. She had that kind of thing going. I have a photograph of, and I think this was taken before my dad came. This I think would be in the in the twenties at Andy some point. That. I don't know. It's yeah. Will and Will and Jenny Kittleberger. She was a hollower, which yeah. was also yeah. a big Webster name. Yeah, that is. And. Um, so I always felt that I was a, an outsider because we had nobody. But our connection to the Kittlebergers was that they made out the papers. This for is your mother and father? No, no, no. no. It's Donnie Kittlebergers. Um, let me think. Will Kittlebergers was your father's aunt, uncle. Yeah, he was. Yeah. A, he it's was Donnie's great the, uncle. He was one of the original Kittlebergers that came over there. It was what? Seven. How many? Yeah, that's what I was going to ask. It was seven. a big family. Yeah. Okay. And so, anyways, so. Uh, my dad came to work for, for them. And this is the house at the time he came over. Um, so I'm thinking. Did you it was live the right 20s. there then? or what No, you we, did, we lived. Uh, my, my, actually, my parents were married in the Kittleberger house. Oh, nice. And they bought a house up on 175 North Avenue. And we lived there until um, Mrs. Kittleberger died in 1943. And Where my, is this? This is down on North Avenue. It's 263 North Avenue. Yes. 
It's the street, like, the house is gone. It's, oh, or it's right there on the floor. Yeah. It's, it's gone. Floor is uh, okay. They tore it down you to build to, Orchard to Street Extension. Orchard Street stopped at North Avenue originally. Oh. And if you didn't stop for the stop sign and kept going straight through, you would have run right into the house that she's talking about. Oh, yeah, that's but their, that, their home. But that went the away time. when they continued Orchard Street over because of it Xerox. It was when Xerox, oh, okay. when Xerox came to town. Oh, yeah. And so... Oh, this is out on the side lawn, right? On it's the, over from the uh, south side, yeah. yes. Oh, oh there okay. Were a lot, <laughs> he did a lot of planting. Oh, yeah, well. okay. That was why he came over. <clears throat> so he was a gardener in Ger yeah. Germany? Yeah, that was what he apprenticed at it when he was in oh, nice. Germany. I did find this old picture of the canning factory, which was Will oh, wow. Will Kittleberger's. Take it um, Will Kittleberger's business was Webster Canning and Preserving Company. And actually, my dad worked for Jenny, his Will's wife. And uh, well, he lived up over the boiler house. In the he did. Yeah, that's gone. He and Jane Kine. He yeah. had a room up there that yeah. they lived in. I used to oh, take naps up there, remember? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she remembers? <laughs> and uh, so anyway, so he, uh, <laughs> that was the reason. It, uh, Tom and my sister used to uh, go out back at, when his mom used to come and work at the shop holiday time answering the phone, and, and Tom Easter. would come down and oh, yeah. play with my youngest sister. And so anyways, we, um, I, I went to Webster's High School, we started out in kindergarten. Did you get it? Yeah. And graduated from there yeah. Yeah. 13 so, years yeah. later. It was all the same building. We had no other. I think there were little schools around the town, but I was in Webster High School for 13 years. Kindergarten. Really? Yeah. My grandchildren and great grandchildren find that hard to believe. <laughs> schools now. But, um, and then the, um, over the years, our family has. Um, Grown the, the shop. My father started working for Mrs. Kittleberg as a gardener, and then I think he had a furnace to keep, so he started. They start well. They sold things before he came. I have seen some papers from uh, uh, Valerie Wright. Wall uh, brought in a little uh, minute book from a, a church group, and they used to buy flowers or plants and carnations at Mother's Day time from Mrs. Kittleberg in 1915. Oh, wow. So my dad didn't come until 28. So now we have taken over, our, or my family has taken over uh, the time we just started, 1928, when my father came to, the, to start there. Okay. Now we could go back But you further. own it now, right, your family? My family does, yes. And so when my did you children. buy it? From them? Well, we took care, my parents took care of uh, Will Kittleberger after Jenny died. Right. Um, because they had no children of their own. So my parents and my sisters and I moved down and stayed with them for, uh, took care of him for 10 years until he died. He was 88 when he died. Mm -hmm. And then at that point, it was turned over to my father. Mm -hmm. So anyways, that was, uh, and then there's a, those couple pictures are a couple that I found that were over the years of what So we, how many children in your family then? I have five children. Mm -hmm. No, okay. In oh, your my, I have mother and father. I, uh, two children, two, two sisters and me. Oh, okay. And um, they're both out of town. Uh, I'm the only one that stayed in Webster. I've had two addresses in my lifetime 175 and 263 North Avenue. <laughs> <laughs> Although at 263, I had uh, several, several places at that property that I lived at. But um, so now we're, uh, our, my five children are at the shop, and, and uh, probably, I don't know, four or five great grandchildren I have to or grandchildren. I'm hoping some of the great grandchildren will get involved. <laughs> so, my um, goodness. Family business, huh? But uh, <laughs> that was my connection with the Kittlebergers is because my dad made out got the papers made out from them. Did uh, you learn gardening? Well I grew up in the place and then that's what I ended up doing for my um, so you did the my, you've done the bouquets and all oh that. I did everything yeah. from take yeah. orders to deliver things get things ready and deliver it was yeah. making yeah. corsages till yeah. midnight on Saturday oh, yeah. before uh, Easter yeah <laughs> you and your sometimes mother. all night yeah there were some nights we worked from yeah. Friday till Saturday I can night. still mm -hmm. see the table with all you guys around yeah. lighting all that stuff under the flowers <laughs> to make thank them goodness that part isn't there anymore but uh, <laughs> they don't have to work quite as many hours yeah. now computers and all mm -hmm. have made a huge difference. And, of course, there's more of them now. 
more people yeah. to be involved in yeah. the business. So it's, as I say, I, I don't have a lot of connection other than that to Webster's. So what do you do you remember in the village? What is a is there an event that you remember? Well, they used to have the Fireman's Carnival, as I recall, on Lapham Park. Oh, yeah? I don't know whether anybody remembers that or not. Do you remember that, Donald? The uh, carnival was on Lapham Park? I mean, it wasn't, my, it was like a street fair, I think, yeah, or something. I, well, I don't think they, I don't remember rides and that rides? kind of thing. Oh, no. I don't remember rides and that, but uh, that was wow. before they owned the property out on Ridge Road. Yeah. But Hilda, I think at one point you were saying that you used to work at the Webster Bath. Oh, I did. My first job was Tell a little bit about that uh, and what you yeah. remember. Elnora Kittleberger, who's Donnie's aunt, um, asked me when I was in uh, high school if I'd like a job working at, at the uh, office over there for the basket factory. And we battled. They were in the office. They had their office together. So I started working there. And I worked there until I was expecting my first child, and then I had to give it up because I couldn't work anymore. But uh, and then I really got more involved with, at at uh, Kittleburger Florist. Yeah. But uh, I never had to apply for a job. I mean, Elnora <laughs> came and approached me, "Would you like to work?" And so I did different things there. Uh, ran their bookkeeping machine for the oil company, and for a while I was out in front waiting on the customers that came in, or and I helped with the payroll. For the basket factory. It was an interesting job. I enjoyed working there. Frank did, Birch was in. Did you go into Rochester? No, I, were, I was in Webster. Ever? Did you ever? I mean. Well, I used to go in by bus. I remember sometimes from school, we used to go on Saturday, some girl friends and I. We used to take the bus into the city. We'd get off by the, where the library, the Rundle oh, Library yeah. is now. Yeah. That's where we would get the bus to come back home again. And we'd wander around the shops and or the stores in the city and try on clothes. We never bought anything, but we we had a good time buying, you know, trying things on. And then at the end of the day, we'd come back to Webster on the bus. But um, it's uh, Webster is so much different now, of course, than it was. It used to know most a lot of people or knew how, where they lived and who they were. But now Webster is. Um, Metropolitan more than it was in those days. But, uh, so I'm trying to remember what year did Martin come over here? 1950. 50, okay. Yeah. So yeah. he started with, with uh, the shop in 1950. Were you, uh, the basket factory, wasn't that the one that burned? Yeah. Yes, no. they had a fire. Oh, yeah, it did. Oh, <laughs> it yeah. was a big fire. Everybody remembers oh, yeah. that, right? Uh, that three before, times with the last I think time. it was before Mason's burned. No, Mason's yeah. had a huge fire. I remember no, that. No, the, the Mason burned before the bad. Mason's burned. Oh, first. really? Well, they had they had they had a I, fire I in, over there. I was in. A, well, yeah, they had one fire there at one time. There, it was out in the area, in the uh, runway area. They had some uh, uh, stuff uh, petitioned off that they would dry stock in. And one of the motors in there heated up and caught on fire. So the runway, that one runway area caught on fire, burnt through the roof. In fact, I helped put the boards back down on that roof <laughs> when I was growing up on that first fire they had that I remember. Uh, they repaired that, put down the new roof and everything. But the big fire was at the... I came out of service. That was in the, in the late 70s and that. By that time, the basket factory had basically gone out of business. Uh, yeah. They weren't. There was still a big demand for baskets. Right. But the prices back in and like this, out did the plastics and the bags and all this yeah. other stuff and the big crates that they were using now for the. There is still a... Well, the railroad wasn't here, was it, in the 70s, or was it? Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Was was it? Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it was still uh, So it was still, okay. Don, you were telling me also about where they used to get the trees um, for the wood for the basketry, and I think 
you were telling me that they had exhausted the tree. Well, they got, uh, when I was growing up, they had, uh, they had some woods up in the around, redwood up in there and, uh, that they would truck the logs into prior to in the early 30s and 40s. I don't remember too much. I know logs came in, but uh, some of them were trucked by the company itself. Do you know what kind of wood they use? Right. Well, most, uh, well, the beech, maple, oh, yeah. uh, elm. The uh, trouble was the elm, they, they had the elm, they, they yeah. liked the elm, especially for the for the loops of the baskets oh, yeah. because they were stiff. But uh, they had that big elm disease, so elm was, but most of it was beech, uh, white birch, I've seen white birch, uh, maple. It depends on what, what part of the basket they want the strongest and yeah. for what type would they, would they were used. So then can you tell about when they brought the wood in, what they did with the wood at oh. the basket? Well, company? yeah, the, the wood was, uh, I never worked in the factory itself. I was always on the end there catching the baskets when they come down and throw them into the packer for the guys in the truck. I never did work in the factory, but um, they would come down, the logs would be there and they would size them up what they wanted and cut them to length. And then they would go into a hot water bath. That would soften up the wood so when they bought it up and put it in a big lathe and, sh and shear the veneer off of it, huh. it would come off without splinting. Real thin. Right. Yeah. yeah. That wouldn't be allowed today anymore. Those were open baths. Yes, they were. As I recall as a kid, yeah. seeing them out there. Yeah, they were open, <laughs> they were open baths. And they had boards over them. I mean, after they filled the bath, there was boards put over them. Oh, yeah. But then when they... Yeah, they... There weren't always boards over them, were there, Tom? <laughs> <laughs> there were sometimes kids. There was. There was. <laughs> yeah. I That's know, true. you're probably too young, Tom, to remember when they, they were... Yeah. I always said they like cooking those, those they were, logs. Yeah. Tom? I remember more with the floors. Uh, that was always... Uh -huh. I have a lot of fond memories of that, being down there at Easter time. And, I told I can remember uh, being in the, what we call the back greenhouse, the one that went off the back of the boiler, not the not the south one, but it would be the west one, I guess, off the boiler room. Sitting back there and and having lunch before I was in kindergarten <laughs> with mom while she was working down there. And because uh, your mom used to work for Will Kittleberger at the canning yeah. factory. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she was the yeah. office lady. At one point, there. she did. Yeah. So but I remember, you know, as a kid, seeing those big trucks come down with those yeah. big locks on them. Yeah. Well, the, the, the vats weren't always covered because I remember going most of the time they were covered. Yeah, jumping from log to log. Oh my goodness! Oh, wow. Now that's scary. <laughs> the boiling water. Ooh. We were kids. <laughs> you were boys. Let's put that. <laughs> no, during the war time, they used to have prisoners working there at the oh, yeah. bathroom factory. Mm -hmm. And also the cannon factory. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. At first, they were the ones from uh, uh, Italy. Mm -hmm. uh, they would, uh, and uh, my uncle, there was a, one of my uncles there, he would have to go up to uh, Cobbs Hill and pick them up in the morning. They had a bus. Mm -hmm. They had a bus that would go up there and pick the prisoners up, bring them down to the factory. And the cannon factory always used. Uh, used some prisoners to it at, at war time. Then later on, they had German prisoners. Yeah. That way, I can remember that. When they did that, they used to have to, they had a uh, a cage built around the driver. When the, when the Italian ones, that was open. But I can remember when they used to have the Germans. Then, then they had a guard on the, with the German prisoners when they bought the Germans. But there was a cage around the driver. Oh, my goodness. He was taking them back and forth. But they we used had to Italian prisoners in, too, someplace. Mm -hmm. First. Oh, the first? first okay. uh, when they first came in, with the, they were Italian prisoners. Then, later on, 
one son of a German prisoner for a yeah. while. Oh, yeah. they, they were, but they were housed at uh, Copy of the Park. That's what they Do you know if any of them ever stayed around this area? Oh, sure, a lot. Did they all go back? Yeah. I think they had to go back yeah. first before well, they could stay. Maybe back, but uh, there was a lot of uh, people that come over and lived on what is Kettleburger Park. They used to call that, I remember hearing that, called the jungle. Oh, you yeah. couldn't go down there, right, guys? <laughs> the mothers wouldn't let the kids go down that end of the... But there was a lot of them people that come from in there that worked in the basket factory and the cannon factory yeah. Yeah. in there. And I think they said they really liked the Italian. <laughs> it's interesting that you call that specific area of the jungle because that's how I always knew it. Yeah. That's how but I yeah. always knew it. But there's been other stories about here where they seem to extend that jungle out towards Orchard Street and stuff. Oh. I don't remember I don't ever remember crossing over the that. river. They so I mean, were all black buildings back there yeah. in the jungle. Oh, yeah. But it was all right next to, I mean, south of the jungle was a racetrack. Will Kittleberg used to have a racetrack up there. Yeah, um, really. Um, <laughs> like back in the little church down to the jungle. For oh, cars oh, or horses? Horses. Oh, horses. <laughs> <laughs> right there about uh, Maple, Maplewood uh, nursing home is. Yeah. Yeah. That used to be a racetrack in there. Oh, wow. <laughs> so over by Dean Springs? Yes, mm -hmm. yes. Okay. Yes. I thought I played wow. baseball. Oh, mm hmm. That was when I was growing up. That's where the little league field was. Oh, really? That's yeah. probably why it was so clear because it was a racetrack. <laughs> it used to be a racetrack. Yeah. Wow! Yeah. Sorry, cleared out. But the also, wow. Will Kitterberger, well, Kitterberger Park is where that extended back in there, like where the houses is. Yeah. Dean Springs. There, he used to have a couple cows or so, and he there was a building back in there where he had the cows back in there in the summertime. And his farmer, us, our Schrader, used to go back there. That's where he used to build. I used to go with our Schrader sometimes down in there to build, milk the cows. That's what they were put in in the summertime. <laughs> they were in the barn there on Orchard Street before it got torn down. Oh, okay. But in the summertime, people would put them in a pasture back yeah. there in which was called the jungle area. Yeah, yeah. And there was just a, a shed there for about three cows, or two cows, or I don't remember, two or three cows he had. He also drive back through there, which is now all housing in there. Yeah. There was a, there was a road or trail back in there, and they used to go back there in the summertime. That's where the cows were. I'm just standing up here, sorry guys. These, this is how thin they would oh, slice that right. to make the baskets. Right. Yeah, we got a yeah. basket full of stuff back there. That's yeah, and then it would be. Yeah, would sorry. Be I didn't. For the, Go ahead. For I didn't mean to interrupt. But the inner factory itself, I never, in the basket factory, it never worked itself. I usually worked with the oil company. And I used to like the garage in there. They, they always give me the job of changing tires. Yeah. Sometimes I clean, pick them up, and change them anyway. <laughs> does, does everybody here remember where the name Webacco for the oil company came from? No. Webster Basket. Oh, oh. 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 Webacco no, no, from no, Webster no. Basket. Oh, yeah. Where did they make them? Sadly, they're gone. I yeah. 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 They had quite a squabble over Webacco, you know, after Gottlieb died and. Mm -hmm. It ended up being no more. Yeah, which was they, too bad. Which was too bad. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> that was. Uh, I can remember everybody when they used to come down for flowers. They actually used to park on the uh, on the driveway of the house where the horseshoe right. went around yeah. the house, yeah. and you would walk down the hill. And it wasn't an office that you went into. It was a greenhouse, mm -hmm. and and I can still see. Pot after pot after pot of tulips wow. and daffodils and stuff, and it. it was just amazing when you when you walked through the door. The smell of the flowers just totally engulfed you. It was it was wonderful. It was a great time to be down there. His dad, uh, her dad, is the one. They used to he used to put them in a coal frame there in the winter time, yeah. cover them up, and then in spring. Would dig them out. I help. Uh, I would help him once in a while. Uh, 
laid in pots. I'd be over there and he'd be putting pots and I help line them up there sometimes. Yeah. It was a, a much different business you said now it's computer. I remember going down there with my dad. My dad would go in, make the bouquet he wanted, and just say to Willie, put this on my bill on the way out. Willie would look at it and say, okay. <laughs> and that's the way it was done. Yeah. I mean, now it's yeah. quite hear, different. I was, was down there this morning. You know? Oh, were you? <laughs> you hear about, in the old days, clothing bees and all this mm -hmm. other kind of stuff, but I think uh, I mentioned a little bit earlier, but uh, back then Easter was the big holiday, and I don't it think was. that's even yeah. a significant no. holiday no. to you at all anymore. Probably last Sunday is the most significant one now, isn't it, Mother's, Mother's Day? Day? Mother's Day uh, and Valentine's, Valentine's Day. Valentine's Day. Yeah. But Easter, if you remember, everybody used to wear corsages to church, and the guys yeah. had boutonnieres yeah. and all that, mm -hmm. and all those had to be made. And that's what my mother did mostly was was uh, taking the orders for that. But at night it would be Hilda and her mom, my sister, my mother, and uh, what was your aunt's name that used to come in at Easter time? Um, Probably Aunt Emmy. And then Mary Conroe used to come sometimes. Mary Conroe, yeah. All these all these gals would be in a circle. In, in one of the open areas, and it would be after hours, uh, and they would sit there in a circle and just talk and, and everything else, and all the time <laughs> their fingers are going like this, winding the, winding the wow. stuff onto the flowers. And then Hilda mentioned her youngest sister, Ellie. Ellie was, uh, I believe, a year or two ahead of me, but we were close in age, and uh, Whenever we would get a little too rambunctious, uh, the word would come down, we need corsage boxes. And at that point in time, Ellie and I would start, the, the boxes for the, the corsage flowers were about like this, but they were flat stock. And they had to be all folded and interhooked and so on and so forth. And uh, so that was when we got a little rambunctious, it was time for us to make boxes. And I can remember we used to fill, just about fill that room up upstairs with it. But it kept us out of trouble for a while anyway. That was, uh, it was just a neat place to be in the grove. I was thought so. Yeah. And then, um, now, who used to cook in, in the house at Easter time and like that? Was that Wally Burn or Wally's? Wally's mother. Wally's mother. Used, yeah. Yeah. My aunt. Now how? I used to feed everybody. How did that connection? Was there a family connection there between the Bernickers and you guys? My father' uh, sis sister was a Bernicker. Okay. Okay. He was, as I recall, a city mailman. No, that was Lonely. Oh, that okay. Was my aunt Lisa. Okay. My other. Um, years ago, when my dad first, when he first came over, um, Mertens, who lived in his town, came over first, and they wanted to. He asked them if they can find anybody who would make out papers for him. So they came to Webster, and they worked. He worked at the uh, canning factory, and that's how the connection was that they got the papers for my dad to come over. Oh, okay. But Mertens were no relation, but they were my aunts sister-in-law and brother-in-law. Yeah. But um, in those days, you didn't just come into the country. You had to pass physicals. You had to have somebody sponsor, sponsor you so that you had a job, that you would not be um, getting any money from the government. And um, you had to pass various things to get in. It was the same when my husband came in 1950. You still had to have a sponsor. His aunt sponsored him. And uh, she was responsible. If he didn't find a job, she would have to take care of him and give him housing and so forth. It was we didn't have open borders that people just decided they wanted to come in. Now it's not quite as easy, but um, it was difficult to get in this country. Did Matt and John come over with him? Pardon me. Did Matt and John come over with? Uh, no, Pardon? Matt, uh, his brother-in-law and his sister, Martin's mother-in-law and sister, and their son came uh, together. And then later on, um, 
John and his mother, Martin's mother and father came. So, um, but as I say, everyone had to have somebody sponsored me, as my father was sponsored by the Kittleburgers. Have you ever gone back to Germany? I've been back several times, yes. Have you? Yeah. So you visited? It family. was neat to see where both my parents yeah. grew up. Yeah. It's still, a lot of places are still in the family. Nice. I know they, uh, There's a story that I don't know that you've ever heard, but uh, remember we used to go over to visit that Masonic Lodge in, in Canada every yes, year, yeah. bus trips and like Yes. That. And um, her dad, Willie, always used to go with us. And uh, we were crossing the border, and the, the, the border guys would come on the bus and they'd go down through seat after seat, and the guys are trying to get the Euchre games hidden away and so on and so <laughs> forth, which your dad was part of, obviously. But uh, he would come down through and ask everybody where they were born. And, and come down, Webster, 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 you get <laughs> down to your dad. And the guy's just kind of ambling down through Webster, Webster, Webster. <laughs> and he stopped on the tracks. <laughs> By this time, your dad was bent right over, double laughing and reaching into his pocket for his papers. <laughs> but I can still hear him doing that. He couldn't wait to I imagine. Do it. <laughs> I thought he would simplify things. Yeah. <laughs> you could tell from his accent he was not from Webster. <laughs> Her dad was quite a euchre player. Was he? Yeah, the Masonic Temple was, uh, well, he, he and my mother gave the property that the present uh, Masonic Temple are on it, which mm -hmm. used to be Kittleburg property. But uh, he enjoyed his Masonic. Yeah. Oh, where they have the spaghetti dinners now? Yes. Yeah. 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 In fact, I think they have a room, is the room still down there, Willie's Place, or whatever it was called? Oh, yeah, the, the downstairs room is known as Willie's Place. Oh, yeah? Yeah. <laughs> well, Willie... And my dad and, and a couple of other ones whose names don't come to me right now, when the meetings were over, we would always go down into the dining room, or, or when we were up on South Avenue, uh -huh. it would be at the, the south end there, the second floor. They all had euchre decks in their coat pockets. <laughs> <laughs> and, and it was always a race to see who was going to get their, their deck out of their, their uh, pocket first. <laughs> pocket first, yeah. And most of them, yeah, it was by hook or by crook because they were so worn you couldn't even tell what some of the stuff was on the card anymore, but it was still a challenge. <laughs> so I can't think of anything else startling. My tour of service that I was over there, I was over in Europe, but I did, uh, when uh, my uncle, Gene Keim and Anna Keim, went over to visit her parents. I happened to be in Spain at the time, and I went to Kirkheim Tech. This is where <coughs> her dad come from. Yeah. Okay. He, in turn, took me to Knife, and this is where my grandfather, Charles Kutterberger, was born, uh -huh. and showed me where he came from. Oh, wow. Which is, well, between Knife and, and Kirkheim Tech is where Willie Foose was born, or come from where his parents were still living at the time. It's about like from Webster to West Webster from Knifen. You could stand on the hill at, at Kirkheim Tech and see Knifen. So he took me there, he knew where uh, my grandfather had lived. And there was a, uh, lived over top of, uh, there was a farming there, the animals were downstairs and they lived upstairs. <laughs> I think it, Ruth Gerber and Norm and Dwight Gerber, their um, um, father, I think, came from the same area. Now, in the Webster, my cousin Ken Kitterberger, he was in the service, and he was stationed in Germany. He wrote a lot of history on the Kitterbergers, and you have a copy of that up here. Do we? Yeah, yeah. And He's the one that sent us all the Boy Scout stuff. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, he was stationed in Germany for three and a half years, so he got around and went to a lot of places that where the Kitterburgers were, 
and come down with a lot of information that we didn't know about. It's in the. He lives what down in Georgia or someplace like that now. No, nah, he's in Maryland. Some yeah. Maryland, he said. Yeah. You, you said the Boy Scout stuff for many years. Troop 112 stored its trailer and equipment at the basket bank. Oh yeah. <laughs> in the garage. At the well, we're back over we're garage. Back over. But Ken was in Troop 108. <laughs> for whatever that's worth. <laughs> Oh. Well, thank you very much for coming and sharing your stories. Yeah, very pleasant. There are two slips here with my birth there. Oh, uh, they didn't show up. <laughs> <laughs> I know I'm not worth much, but at least you know you're It's nice you still have those things. The pay, and this is probably worth more than me. <laughs> Did you take a picture of him, Peter? I did not. You want a picture of those? Sure. Oh, yeah. yeah. Can I, can I have a, you didn't I, get them? Can I borrow them back? I'll oh. just. All I, have, all I have to do That's is. The hospital bill. Yeah. Well, yeah. Like yeah. After, yeah. after over 80 years. I don't. Do that. <laughs> you know, it's in pretty good shape, too. For yeah. 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 It's 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 like sure. I said, it's been in that tin box for <laughs> all the years. <laughs> I didn't even know it was down, down in there. Yeah. How far can my arm stretch? There you go. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I got a, a little something from the museum for you. <laughs> so, everybody will know you've been here. <laughs> well, isn't that sweet? Thank you so you. much. Hello, Mr. Oh, the old Webster High School. Yeah. And here's the years. Before it, before it changed to what it is today. Right? Thank you so much. We're not allowed to go in that front door. It was only for the teachers and the adults. Where did you go? We, there was a side door. Side door? There was, oh, yeah. 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 Kindergarten started here and went up, and that was the nurse's office. Yeah. And then it went down and... Yeah, I went through every one of them before they remodeled or whatever. Yeah. Wow, well, yeah, we they remodeled and put the extension down. Yeah. Well, I, I was the explorers told the last trailer. year of, it was the there was a couple of extra years oh, that kept me in there. I saw the addition of being Oh, yeah, we back over that. Yeah. Oh, I don't know. They either liked me or something, but they didn't want to let me go. That's why they didn't let me go. You had a good sense of humor, right? Where were you stationed? In the Air Force. I, I started out after I finished tech school in Illinois. I, I started, my first assignment was Japan. A ship, a place called a ship in Japan. Okay. Okay, then I came back from there. I went back, they sent me back to Chinook. Wanted me to be a teacher. Well, I was no teacher. <laughs> so I decided I wanted to stay. I wanted to overseas again. So I put in for, I got Okinawa. From Okinawa, they closed that place. My outfit up. I was in air rescue. And from there, I got sent to Guam. And then I decided I wanted to go to Europe. I wanted to go to Europe before. So I put in for a consecutive to Europe, and I got Spain. That's the longest tour I had, three and a half years in Seville, Spain. Wow, okay. Beautiful city. I was a pro propeller mechanic. Okay, from, from Spain. I came back and they sent me to Otis Air Force Base. Well, at that time they were cutting down on things and I was looking on tankers for KC-97 tankers, propeller mechanics. Well, they closed that down and I got shipped to a place called Mactan Island in the Philippines. Really? Yeah, and that was a... Still a propeller man. But they it was transport airplanes, uh, propeller driven, back and forth to Vietnam. So this was a stop off point for them. For the crews to get rested. See, they fly over so long they have to have crew rest. So this was a stop off point for them. 
and then they get on there, fight a load of Vietnam, come on back. Uh, okay. So I was there. So I stayed in there, and from there, let's see, oh, I got sent back to uh, Cannon Air Force Base, New Mexico. And when they closed up, I had got sent over to, I wanted overseas again if I could get it. So uh, sent me over to Korea. So I was over there. I spent, I liked the overseas duty a lot better than I did the States. You could see the other countries too, besides mm -hmm. that. So uh, all my tour service, I had over 12 years in service out of 20. So I had most time overseas than I did in the States. Wow. Mm -hmm. I figured I could see the States any time. I don't see yeah. the overseas. <laughs> <Right. as much. laughs> that makes sense. Yes, yeah, good for you. So you didn't like teaching, though? I couldn't. I was lucky. I, I'm as bad today as I was when I got out of school. I still can't read and spell. Well, I can read, I can spell, but I can't read it after I write it. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, to be a teacher there, they give you a little test on, on writing and like this. Well. I couldn't kind of well. Like <laughs> Wasn't your cup of tea. <laughs> Wasn't my cup of tea. So I stayed there at the school in the uh, teaching department. Uh, they had the job of uh, keeping the tech manuals up. They had the stuff come in. I kept them filed. I went and picked up the supplies for the, the, the school that needed. Uh, there was uh, stuff that had to be delivered between one department and the other from there. So that was my job. Make coffee for them guys. <laughs> so that's what I did. How long did you do that? How long was that? Until, my until, until I re-enlisted oh, okay. there. And then I re-enlisted for... I, they wanted to, kept talking me to re-enlist. I said, well, if you can get me an overseas assignment, I'll stay. <laughs> so, well, when you talk like that, they find you one. <laughs> and that's when they sent me to Ogun. I got my second tour of duty to Okinawa. Wow. So I stayed there. How I never did get there, Ben. How long, huh? how long did you stay there? Well, at Okinawa. I only stayed there for six months because they closed their outfit belt up oh. and sent me to Guam. Well, they were starting to cut back yeah. and things. It was a nail rescue outfit, and they didn't need us anymore, so. Air rescue still took us, but they needed the people in Guam. Yeah. They closed one up in the Philippines, they closed up Okinawa, and they sent us to Guam. I couldn't, we did, I thought we did more work in Okinawa and the mother when they were Guam. I couldn't see no use of it. Did those. you have a favorite place that you liked? I would say Spain and Japan was the, first of all, I'd say uh, Spain, then Japan, and then uh, and the Philippines was nice when I was down there. It was... Good. Seen a lot of the world. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> At government expense. <laughs> That's the way to do it. That's the way to do it. Well, I had no choice. At yeah. the time that I was right. coming out of school, the draft was still there. Yeah. The army was biting at me, and I didn't want nothing to do with the army. So you took so the best I, choice you had. So I thought that was a better out, and I liked it. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. I had a couple of aunts that were dissatisfied with me when I <laughs> decided the second time because they wanted me to come back and take over the basket factory. Uh -huh. And then it was on the, at that time, in the 50s, 57, like this, the basket factory was on the downhill. Mm -hmm. they were, and so I said, no, do I, was else do, I was going to do what I wanted to do. <laughs> and I'm glad I did what I did. It sounds like it was a good choice. It was a good choice. When I look back at it today, it was one of the best choices I ever made. So. Uh -huh. yeah. Like I said, I come out at 41. I worked as a retired bum. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't get married. I'd never been married. 
and the tired, people Paul. kept asking I said, well, I don't stay in one place long enough, <laughs> which I didn't. Yeah, it's true. So? That's the way it worked out. Well, thank you for coming today, for sure. Yes. Thank yeah. you. It was very good. Thank and you. I got, when I got out, the uh, car there, the deed there, so I tore that down completely. I completely restored that thing from ground up. Wow. Nice. So as you walk out the door, notice this car. Well, I've seen it before, oh, but now I'm going to give it special notice. Yeah, <laughs> special notice. yeah that's the one on that. that okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.